Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the FTD University webinar titled Making the Most of Your Cash Flow. Today's featured presenter is Derek Myers, president of Crockett Myers and Associates. He is a certified public accountant and certified financial planner. As a business consultant, Derek has developed financial strategies that are unique in the floral industry and have proven instrumental in the growth of many florists. As a quick housekeeping note, Derek will be taking questions throughout the session. If you have a question, simply type it in the chat box in the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. All right, let's get started. Welcome, Derek. Thank you very much, Janet. And I want to thank FTD for having me here today and, and talking to everybody about this topic that, you know, I just find it amazing. I, I've called this one making the most of your cash flow. And it's so different than anything I've ever done because for florists for the last 15, 20 years, everything we've talked about cash flow is how to create cash flow, how to improve cash flow, how to get more of it. And for a change, we actually have some cash flow. Um, you know, thanks to COVID, actually, uh, I hate to sound, uh, I, I don't mean to sound, um, you know, like anything was great about COVID, but from a business standpoint, last year, our sales in our business increased pretty dramatically uh, online as a result of COVID. So the, the changing in the buying habits as everybody, you know, stayed indoors and stayed home, they started buying online. And what we saw was we lost a lot of event work and a lot of other work, but our, our internet business grew and held us pretty well uh, to the same levels of sales as we were in the previous years. Some even did better uh, during, during this whole COVID time than they did in the past, which generated more revenue and more profit. Um, also, we during the same time period, we had less employees and we had you know, lower expenses. And so we were really making more money last year uh, honestly, I think 2020 is going to go down as being one of the most profitable years in the floral business uh, since back in the mid 80s when, you know, all you had to do was open your doors and you made money as a florist. So for years, we've always talked about how to improve cash flow, how to get it. Last year, we made really good profits. On top of that, we had, you know, relief from the PPP loans and the EIDL loans and the grants and all the different state grants and, and the uh, retention, employee retention credit, all these different credits and all this different money has given us more cash flow than we've seen in a lot of years. So here we are, after about 18 months of dealing with all this stuff, I'm starting to get questions on a regular day basis, almost every day of, hey, should I pay this debt down? Should I pay this note off? Should I, what, you know, should I get rid of this bill? What should I do with this cash? Should I hold on to it? Should I invest it somewhere? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So for those of you guys who are sitting on more cash than you've seen in a long time, we're going to talk strategically about how to how to and when you should eliminate debt. We're going to talk about looking at your expenses in a way so that you can figure out which ones need to be eliminated to maintain your cash flow the best as you can. Uh, we're going to talk about how to kind of prepare for maybe a turn in the economy, maybe some downtimes. And then we're also going to look at how to boost your credit score a little bit so that you can maintain, you know, your credit and your, and your uh, loans at the, at the best terms you can get. Okay. So again, my name is Derek Myers. And I work for a company called Crockett Myers and Associates, and we are an accounting and business consulting firm that have been working in the floral industry for, gosh, 37 years now. It seems crazy, but um, I mean, I, I'm just barely 37 myself, and you know, but I'm doing this forever. Um, but what we do is we actually work with florists. We specialize in florists and we help coach them using their, their financial statements and their, their information. And we help them utilize that information to become more profitable. You know, how to understand cost of goods and how to squeeze a little bit more profit out of them, how to look at them by line, how to get into your labor costs and really squeeze that profit out of there. And that's what we've been doing for the last 37 years is helping florists make more money. So today I told you we're gonna start with managing debt. And this really has been the question I've been getting on a regular basis right now is, should I pay off my debt? And first thing we have to understand about debt, and we're gonna talk about a little bit about debt structure and how it works so everybody can understand where we are. So first thing is there's good debt and there's bad debt, okay? Good debt are things, and we're gonna talk about what they are. So good debt are things like, believe it or not, credit cards, okay? Credit cards can be great debt if they're paid each month in full. So credit card debt, if you charge up on your credit card and you pay that off normally within 30 days, there's no interest charge, there's no fees, you basically get to borrow that money for free. 
So it's a great way to uh, expand your cash flow, your, your, your cash usage, and then pay it off and, and kind of push it down the road a little bit. So credit cards are, are probably the best uh, debt if we can keep it paid on a regular basis and not let it charge us interest. The other good debts are going to be our long-term low interest rate loans. And these are going to be things that pretty much have collateral associated to them. So we're going to see things like mortgages and credit lines and uh, the EIDL loans are collateralized loans with very, very low debt, great terms. Um, you know, EIDL loans are 3.75% for 30 years. We're not going to see debt like that in, in the future. Okay. So when we're looking at, should we pay off our debt? We need to look at what kind of debt we have and how easy would it be to replace in the future? Or could it ever be replaced? Um, I mean, some of the, some of the, the terms we're seeing now on home loans and, and other credit lines, the interest rates are lower than they've ever been. And I don't see them getting that low again. Um, I think we're going to see interest rates climbing. We'll be talking about that a little bit in a minute. We're going to see interest rates climbing. And as they climb, it's going to be very difficult to replace some of this debt in the future. So that means we may not want to pay it off earlier. Okay, other good debt are going to be vehicle loans, and um, and long-term leases. It's interesting you'll note most of this debt, other than the credit cards that we're paying off regularly, are collateralized loans. And what makes this good debt is that because they have the banks have collateral, they're willing to give you longer terms on the loans and lower interest rates. So it tends to be good terms for you. All right, so let's talk about what's some bad debt. Bad debt. Number one bad debt, credit cards. Okay, Credit cards are the worst debt if you start carrying a balance on them. You'll find they're unsecured. They're going to have the high, you know, some of the highest interest rates you're going to be charged. I mean, they can be anywhere from, I think the lowest I see anymore is like 12, 90, 12, you know, 12% 12 up to 25, 30%. So credit card interest rate can get crazy. So if you allow yourself to start carrying balances on these loans, it gets very costly. And, you know, need to look at, you know, probably getting rid of that bad debt. Other bad debt are going to be your short-term high interest rate loans. And, um, you know, basically those kind of loans are things like hard money lenders. Uh, those are the guys, if, if you haven't seen them, they're going to say, hey, we'll give you $100,000 uncollateralized. We don't care. You just pay us back $2,300 a month for the next 52 weeks and it's over. And you end up paying them back about 120 grand. They make about 20 to 30% interest uh, over the course of a year. Um, that is, you know, hard money. It's, it's very expensive. It's not the best kind of debt you want to have. So if you've got that kind of debt, we want to get rid of that pretty quickly. Um, also, uh, some credit lines are going to be, uh, you know, higher interest rate, and we need to make sure we're, that we're taking care of those and, and maybe, you know, refinancing them. So my first thing I'm going to say is we got to pay things debt off selectively. Now, first, I'm going to give you a little bit of my cash flow concerns coming up. I feel like we're going to start to see things changing. I hope I'm wrong, but I think we're going to see expenses continue to go up. I think we're going to start seeing inflation at much higher rates. We're going to see interest rates start to go up, and it's going to get more difficult to continue making the profit we've been making. Um, I think it would be fine through this year, but into next year and maybe even 2023, I think we might see cash flow start to dry up a little bit, profits start to dry up. So I would recommend hanging on to as much of the cash as you can at the same time, paying off your debt selectively. Uh, certain things that we want to get rid of, some of these bad debts, we want to get rid of them as quickly as we can. So try to, don't be in a rush to pay off, you know, vehicle loans or other, or, or other good debt. Only let's work on some of that bad debt. So here are some rules you need to follow when looking at debt and how to pay it off. First thing we want to do is don't try to pay multiple loans down at the same time. So if you got extra extra cash for the, you know, and I'm talking about have a regular cash flow too. I'm not talking about just grabbing money out of the bank and paying it off. I'm saying if using your cash flow, if you've got some extra cash, don't try to split it up on five different debts and pay them off. Pay your minimums on all of them. Pick one and pay that one off faster. Hit, hit with that one with everything you've got. Okay. Now, don't simply pay the highest debt loan first. Okay. The highest interest rate first. So, Although the interest rate is important, it's not the number one criteria for cash flow. And that's what we're going to talk about next is a formula. This is a formula you want to use to determine which loan to pay off first and, how, and where you go. So it's called the cash flow index loan line. And basically what it does is it looks at the balance you have in an account. So if it's a credit card account, it looks at that balance. And then it looks at your required minimum payment. And so you, you basically take your account balance, you divide it by the required minimum payment, and it gives you a number. 
And what you do is you take the ones that have the lowest number, the lowest CFI, and that's the one you pay off first. So you analyze all your debt based on account balance and minimum payment. What we're trying to do here is use the, our cash most efficiently. It may not always be the highest interest rate debt first. It's the one that takes the most cash each month. We're going to get rid of that one first. And then we're going to go to the next one. And but what we'll find is we get rid of, as you get rid of one of those, you know, cash hogs, all of a sudden you got a lot more cash available to tackle the next one and then more to tackle the next one. And quickly you can start to get rid of your debt. So that's what, that's the way you want to approach this. And that's not even talking about all the money we just have sitting in cash right now. I don't recommend you take a lot of that cash and pay down debt, at least not until we get out of this mess. I don't think we're out of it. I think, you know, We've been, we've been supported through through this whole phase of COVID. The, the whole economy has been supported by all the money that's been put in by the government, all the money that's been given to the, to the uh, consumers through unemployment, all the money that's been given to all the different businesses through all the different uh, outlets out there. That money is gonna start drying up. And as it does, we're gonna see the economy start to tighten up a little bit. And as things tighten up, we're gonna need this cash. And if we've spent it all to pay down debt, my concern is we're not going to be able to borrow it back, at least not nearly as efficient as what we're borrowing it right now. Okay? So other thing is, if you've got any debt that has a CFI of 50 or less, man, we need to pay that off as quickly as possible. That's just really going to suck your cash away and we need to get rid of it fast. Okay, So that's, that's how we want to start paying off debt. Now, the other thing we can do besides just pay it off is restructure it. So especially bad debt, if we can refinance bad debt and consolidate, you know, maybe some of those credit cards or uh, some other bad debt right now, while we have cash in the bank, while we have good profit numbers on our, on our financial statements, now we have a chance to actually do some refinancing. What happens with banks is as soon as you need money, it's no longer available to you. So you've got to get all of these lines in, in place now, get the, re, get the consolidation loans done now, get new credit lines approved, get, get increases on all of your lines. Um, you know, all of these things actually help, you know, increases in lines, increases in, in, in um, you know, debt that's not being used will help your credit scores and some of the other things that we talk about, okay? So get all these lines now while, while you're financially able to do it. And, you know, banks love lending people money who have money and who are making money. They don't have any problems doing that. It's when you have used all your cash and, you know, profits are down and you come to them saying you need some help, they're not going to be available. And if they are available, it's going to be at very high interest rates and poor terms. So you're going to be taking possibly good debt, taking cash now, paying off some good debt, and then borrowing bad debt later down the road if things, if times get tough. So I would say hang on to some cash and don't be so anxious to pay that off, right? Now, let's talk about debt restructuring. One of the other things that the banks look at, you know, banks always look at the three C's and this is, these are the things we've got to be cognizant of right now and making them as strong as we can so that we're attractive to the banks for doing refinancing. The first C is a credit score. Credit scores, you know, of course, always, you know, they change daily. And if, and if you don't understand exactly how they're impacted, some of the biggest things that impact them are actually credit cards. So if you have a credit card that you charge up to the max every month, and then you pay it off, even though you don't, you're not even carrying any debt, it's going to hurt your credit score. Because they look at your usage on that credit card. And if you're going from zero to 100% usage, that's an average usage of about 50%. Anything above 30, the banks, the credit scores, your credit scores are going down. So we need to make sure we're, we're using our debt correctly so that it maintains and helps us keep a healthy credit score, okay? So it's actually better off if you're gonna charge one up, you know, let's say you got a card that's 20,000 a month, it's better to have, you know, um, like another card of 20,000 that you're not using so that when you charge that one up to 100%, it's only 50%. So it would only be an average usage of 25%. If you had two cards of 20,000 and only used one up to 20,000, so it's really weird. But then your usage is only 25%. So it's gonna look a lot better for your credit score, okay? Um, cash flow is the next one they look at and that's basically the business profits. So if you're not making money, banks are not gonna lend you any money. So right now, when the profits are strong, businesses look better than we've seen them in a long time, this is your chance to try to get some loans. 
Now, if you're going after big lines and credit lines and things like that, one of the other stuff they're going to look for is collateral. That's the third C. So these are the three C's the banks are looking for. So if you can show you got a good credit score, a good cash flow from the business, and you've got some collateral to offer, you're going to get the loan you want. You're going to get some good, um, good rates and be able to refinance things into better terms. So if you're carrying a bunch of credit cards and other stuff now, look at refinancing that into a line, getting it down. I wouldn't run out and use all my cash to pay it off. I'm, I'm, a little, I'm, I'm being a little uh, uh, bearish on the market coming up and what's, what's happening with the economy in the next couple of years, uh, especially with the possibility of tax increases. I know our, our new president has already, you know, he platformed and said he was going to immediately uh, come in and raise taxes and do different things. Now, I know he has held off a little bit because of COVID and, you know, we're in the mess we're in with that. If he had thrown tax, you know, increased taxes on top of that, it would have just devastated us. But I'm afraid that they're going to start pushing for that next year. So I think we're going to start seeing in 2022, we're going to start seeing some of these tax changes. Um, they're looking to, you know, eliminate uh, capital gains and do a bunch of things that are going to uh, reduce investments. It's going to reduce an in, uh, investor incentive. We're going to start seeing less money being invested in market, spent in different things, which is going to drive prices down, which is going to make everything, um, you know, uh, you know, performance is going to start dropping and things are going to start getting possibly a little worse. Derek, we have a question. Actually, we have a couple of questions. What okay. is a good way to transfer credit card debt? Look for a card with a lower interest rate? Yeah, I mean, if you can get better terms with a credit card, you absolutely, I would say, go to a lower interest rate loan. Um, if you're going to move it from one credit card, if you can move it, you know, if you're taking like a big balance, and let's just say it's $5,000, if, if you're moving $5,000 to another card with a lower interest rate, if it's another $5,000 card, it's still not going to help you very much. If you can move $5,000 to a card that's carrying, you know, has a, a bigger balance or to a couple smaller, you know, break it up in pieces to a couple cards that are worth 5000 Again, usage is the big thing. And that's what's really going to help the credit score. But yes, if you can move one to a smaller or lower interest rate, I would always recommend doing that. Um, but by the same token, we're going to talk about other things that are important with credit cards um, that's not just the interest rate. Some of, I've got some shops that make a ton of money uh, using some of the rewards and things. So we're going to talk about that too. All right. I mean, I've got another question. Would my credit score be affected if I co-sign on a car loan for one of my children? Absolutely. Um, anything that you co-sign on, anything that your name is on, it's going to affect your credit report. And you need to look at those kind of things. You know, and they always tell you to look at your credit report, look at what's on there. And I, I really, um, I can't encourage you enough to go online, look at your credit report and see what's affecting your credit. Um, but yes, absolutely. If you're co-signing on something, it's going to show up on your credit. Where would you go look for that, Derek? Uh, you go to uh, what's Equifax.com or um, what are the other ones? Um, it's the only one I can think of offhand. I know there's three credit bureaus, but you just go right to the credit bureau and you can ask for a copy of your credit report. You can get one report each year for free from each of the three bureaus. So you just go directly to them and ask for one. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so cool. So that's debt restructure. So now I was just mentioning credit card rebates. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. So here's one of the things that you take advantage of with credit cards. So not just you know the best interest rate in terms, but take advantage of credit card rebates. Credit card rebates are really amazing because what they do is if you find the, a card that actually rewards you for buying the things you're going to buy anyway. So a lot of these cards will give, you know, 3% back on this and 2% back on this and 1% on this. Find the card to reward you the most. Uh, for what you spend. So for example, if you travel a lot and, um, you know, you, then you get a card that pays your rewards for, you know, when you buy, go to hotels and airfare and gas and things like that, all your travel related costs. If, if you, if you um, can buy a card that pays cash back on all purchases and use it to buy all your flowers and your advertising and I mean, everything, run all your business expenses through it. I've got a shop that run, you know, I've got, I've got clients who make $50,000 or more per year just by spending money that they're already going to spend because they get these credits and these rewards back. So it's, it's pretty amazing. All right. We've got another question. Okay. If you have a credit card with multiple cards and employee names, are the individual's credit scores affected? No, I don't believe so. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent positive on that, but I'm going to say with 95% positive yeah, that that card is not, that doesn't affect them. It's going to be a company card, so it's not going to affect the personal. It'll affect the person who's who's guaranteed it, but nobody else. Great, thank you. Yep. So one person would be the guarantor on that account, and that person would be affected. 
All right. So next thing I want to talk about is expenses. So we talked about debt and, um, you know, I know I blew through it pretty quickly, but um, what I wanted to look at now is expenses. And what we're looking at here is we're kind of preparing for uh, things changing. Maybe, maybe times get a little tighter and how we could kind of change, how we can prepare for that. So first thing you want to do is categorize your expenses. And this is just four categories that, you know, I kind of came up with. Um, I've seen them called something else, but basically I'm calling them your must haves, your like to haves, your necessary evils, and then of course the things you need to review and possibly eliminate. Okay. Now must haves are just what we would expect. You know, that's our flower purchases. That's our marketing. Oh yeah. A good accountant. These are, these are must haves. You, you got to have those to make, keep your business running. If you don't have these expenses, your business is going to go down. Okay. The like to haves are things like, you know, maybe travel, maybe some education stuff. Um, Maybe some other things that you're doing, maybe a company car or some other perks. These are things we'd like to have in our business, but we don't have to have them. So push come to shove, these are, this is an area we can kind of look to cut a little bit as times start to tighten up. Necessary evils, these are the things like insurances and credit card fees and bank charges and attorneys and all these other expenses that we've got to have, but you know we might be able to tighten down on them a little bit. Um, you know, things like insurances, you can always increase minimum uh, deductibles and change, change what your coverages are to get those costs down a little bit. So when times start to tighten up, these are some of the areas that you can start to look at. Um, and then finally, we have, you know, expenses you want to review for elimination. And, and here I put in like paper filing. You know, we, we still, we all still, a lot of us have paper file cabinets. We're filing things away in paper. And with today's technology, it should be scanned and gone. We shouldn't even be thinking about physically spending the time to take and file things in files and make files and label files. And we're spending so much time in doing things like that and other inefficiencies that we might be able to eliminate. You know, maybe we've got designers that walk back and forth to the cooler all day and maybe it'd be worth having a person that actually set the designers up for their day, got everything ready to go for them. So the designers were more efficient at that table. So again, categorize your expenses, really take a close look at them. What, you, what you're doing here is you're preparing because as, as times tighten down again, as cash flow starts to tighten up again, you can quickly come in and say, hey, look, these are things we were talking about, maybe eliminating before. We need to get rid of these. Let's, let's start making these changes. Let's get rid of this. Or maybe we need to start tightening down on some of these necessary evils or maybe eliminate some of our like to haves for a while. Um, you know, just short term until things come back, until cash flow comes back. And then you can add them back again as things get a little bit better. Okay, so just it's just a little bit of work, but it kind of prepares you for what's going on. Derek, we got a quick question back to the credit cards. Yes. Do you have a recommendation for a credit card with rewards? No, I really don't. It really depends on, I mean, some of the ones I've, I've heard the best, but I don't even know if you can get them anymore. Uh, the plum card I've heard is phenomenal. Um, that, but there, there's, it really depends on what you spend your money on to find the best rewards. So, you know, if you travel a lot, there's some really good ones. Um, I think cash rewards in general are better than like uh, generally like air miles or things like that, just because it's a, it's a more tangible cost um, or tangible income. But I would say, look at what you really spend and try to find the card that's going to give you the rewards you want. Thank you. All right. Now let's talk about bills real quick. So one of the, one of the things with bills, and I know florists tend to do this a little differently, or always have, one of the things we want to do is pay them as quickly as possible. Okay. So by, by doing this, it, it's easier for us to see how much money we have left to spend. So if we pay all of our bills first, and then we still say, all right, so I have all this cash left. Now we know this is what we have to spend. And then the trick is don't spend more than you have. Um, you know, it's so easy to say, I know, especially in business, it's very hard to kind of control expenses sometimes, but wherever possible, if you don't have the cash, don't, don't spend it. Try not to buy it on credit. Unless it's something that you know is going to generate you more revenue in the future, don't spend it on credit. So things that we should be doing on credit would be things like, you know, maybe buying flowers. We might have to buy some flowers to keep the business running. Things that we've got to have. It gets back to our must-haves. Our must-haves can be done on credit. Everything else should never be done on credit. Um, so kind of do that. Other thing is put some money aside. Let's do some savings. You know, we always hear, hey, pay yourself first. The company, it goes for the company too. Try to sock some of this money away. As you're making money right now, and, and we all are, as the money's being made right now, sock it into the savings accounts, put it away, and don't be in such a hurry to spend it and pay it off on debt. Hang on to the debt, 
get rid of the bad debt, keep the good debt, pay it off using that formula and try to hold on to as much cash as you can getting through this. All right. Next thing is kind of unrelated, but max out your retirement plans. Make sure you know, you're paying yourself too. So not only are you paying your payroll, but max out your retirement plans. Get some money out of the company, over to you personally, and get your retirement plans maxed out. You know, doing these kind of things, these simple steps, will, they'll help you create more wealth and keep your company cash strong uh, going into the future. Now, the other thing we got to look out for are black holes. And just as you might expect, these are expenses that just suck up a lot of cash. Um, you know, when, when we're looking at black, you know, cash things, here's where we want to look at our expenses that, in my opinion, they probably should already be gone. So, I'll give you, you know, an example of one of mine in a minute, but you need to look at all your expenses again as you're categorizing, as you're going through them, look at them with a critical eye and go, you know, do I still need this? I'm paying this every month, but should I be? Is it something I can eliminate? Is it something I can get rid of? You know, or is it something I should double down on? Maybe it's a marketing thing and you should be doubling down on it and trying to get more money, uh, you know, to, to grow the volume. So really analyze your expenses and, and take a look at them with a critical eye. Um, look at the expenses, you know, I would recommend taking a couple months worth and looking at what you've spent over a few months and really about, you know, analyzing which one should go, which one should stay and so on. Um, and then along with that, look at your processes. This is one that really got me uh, just this past year. We, we have always got, I'm going to say it's going back to, I don't even know when, mid nineties, when, when CD-ROMs first came out, we all remember them. Back then, when they first started, came out, we were, you know, we were cutting edge accountants, man. We we were giving our tax returns, uh, giving our clients copies of their tax returns on a CD-ROM. Back when they first came out. Well, this past year, my father looks at me and goes, "Derek, why are we still doing CD-ROMs?" He goes, "The last computer I bought doesn't even have a CD-ROM player anymore," and and I'm I'm sitting here thinking you know, why are we doing it? And, and the reason is, we, it's because we've always done it that way. We've been doing it for so long. So what I would be tell you to be aware of is anything you say, oh, I've always done it this way. So we eliminated the CD-ROMs, saved myself, I don't know how many dollars in CD-ROM cost, but we also printed the labels. We stuck the labels on the CD-ROMs. We had somebody then write that, that file to the CD-ROM, CD-ROM that got packaged and mailed. We spent tons of money on these things and we eliminated them and not one person said, hey, where's my CD-ROM? Because nobody can use them anymore. Very few people have CD-ROM players anymore. Well, old computers still have them, but any of the newer ones don't. And if somebody wants an electronic copy, we just email them an MP3 or you know, um, a digital copy. So look at what you're doing. Look at your procedures, things that you've done for years and years and years. You might be able to eliminate and save yourself tons of money and just as importantly, time, which is money in most cases, all right? So, that's pretty much the expenses. Now let's talk about tightening up for the bad times. Yeah, and, and I, I hate to say it, but I think they're coming. <laughs> I, I wish I was wrong. Um, I don't want to get political, but my my thing is I see minimum wage, wage getting pushed up, effectively from seven and three seven twenty five to fifteen dollars over the next you know three or four years. That's that's really about a hundred percent increase in the cost of minimum wage or minimum labor. So our minimum labor is going up a hundred percent. Well, that means every other category of labor is going to go up 100% because the person who was making, you know, eight or nine or ten dollars now wants 11, 12, or 13 dollars. Everybody's going up double over the next five years from there where they were. That means also the cost of a hamburger is going to be double. The cost of a gallon of milk is going to be double. The cost of a dozen roses is going to be double. The cost of everything is going to be double in about five years. It has to be because despite what the government thinks, they cannot set the value of somebody's time. It's set by supply and demand. And what we're gonna see is it's gonna balance itself out over the next four or five years. As one goes up, everything's gotta come up to keep the balance. So I feel in the next four or five years, we're gonna see 100% inflation combined over the next four or five years. That's gonna start tightening things up. You know, money's gonna get tight again. And so what do we do? Here's how we prepare. When the bad times arrive, okay, you need to focus on the present. So what that means is temporarily stop funding retirement accounts. You know, you can't afford them. Don't be putting money into your IRA or into your retirement. Use that money in your business right now, okay? Keep it, keep it close. Uh, take advantage of wholesaler terms. And then I want to I make sure I'm saying this right. 
We're not saying take advantage of wholesalers. We're saying take advantage of their terms. If they offer you 30 days to pay a bill, stretch it out and pay it for open 30 days. You know, don't, don't hold on to that cash as long as you can in these instances. Don't take advantage of them because they need their cash too to keep working as well. Um, you know, if necessary, cash in some of your investments. I, I would not say retirements if you can because they, they're too expensive. But if you have other investments that you can pull into the business, take advantage of that. And then go back to those expenses. Um, well, actually, before that, make minimum payments on all your debt. When times get tight, don't don't worry about, oh, I'm going to pay, you know, an extra $500 on my mortgage and get, get it gone, you know, a, a year sooner. This is not the time to worry about that. Right now, worry about having the cash to run the business, Okay. And um, eliminate some of those unnecessary expenses. Really look closely at them, eliminate those. And these things will help you, um, you know, free up money that you can invest into your number one wealth building asset, which is your, bills, your business. You want to be able to free all this money up and put it into your business and keep it going and keep it making you money because that's where the money's going to come from to keep you going. Okay. So those are kind of some things to tighten up for bad times. Hope I'm being a little pessimistic about that, but we'll see. Uh, last thing I want to leave you with, just a couple quick tips on increasing your credit score. The first thing you have to do with credit scores is understand how credit usage works. This is probably the main thing that's going to bang your credit score. Um, credit usage, again, they want to see below 30% credit usage. So that means if you've got five credit cards with a total of $10,000 in, in use in, in, in available credit, you don't want to use more than about 2,500 of that. If you go more than about 3,000 of that 10,000 available credit, it's going to start to hurt your credit score. So it's better to have more cards that aren't even being used so that when you use one, your credit usage stays low. So credit usage is really important. Okay. The next thing is don't close old accounts. If you have an account and you, let's say you're going to switch to a new credit card, it's got better, better interest rate, lower interest rate card. So you got this card and you're going to switch to another card. Keep the other card open. That open card is valuable. Not only is the credit valuable, valuable, but the length of your credit, how long you've had your credit is also valuable. So if you've got a card that you've had for 20 years and you get a new card and you close that one, your credit's now only been around for a year or no time at all. So you've, getting, you've gotten rid of the history. So keep your old account so your history stays there. Also, so maybe your credit, you know, available credit is higher and, and keep doing that as well. So work those cards really well. Um, ha have a variety of debt. Um, credit cards, a credit, your score is also based on the type of credit you have. So if you have a mortgage and a car loan and credit cards and school loans and you, you know, uh, whatever, different debt is more valuable than having like all credit cards. If you have all credit cards, your, your score is going to be terrible. If you have, if you have no credit score, cards, your score may not be as good as it should be. So they look at a variety of credit and usage. And of course, don't be late on payments. Being late on payments is one of the things that's going to hurt your credit score, you know, probably more than anything. Um, now, when they say late, I don't think it hits a credit bureau unless it's more than 30 days late. So if you're, you know, you go past the mark and it hits you for $25, that's bad enough. But if you go past to the point where it hits your credit score, then you're going to start to see a big impact on credit score. So those are pretty much my tips and, and things for today. Um, I hope uh, you found this information valuable. I really do uh, thank um, FTD for having me here today. And um, this is my contact information. I'm, I'm Derek again with Crockett Myers and Associates. And if you guys have any more questions, I'll sit here and answer them as long as you got. Thanks, Derek. I appreciate that. A lot of great information in there. Um, we are open for any final questions. Thanks for the questions that came in. I do have a couple here. Um, and then as a reminder, just simply type that question in the chat box. Um, if I have this question, if I have cash in the bank earning zero, do I buy the delivery van and capitalize it or do I lease it and expense the payments? Well, <laughs> two questions built in there. First one is um, lease versus buy. Um, Typically, it depends on what you're what you're going to do with the vehicle. If most of the time, if you're going to do a long term lease or a long term yeah lease of over three years, it's going to be considered treated the same as a purchase for taxes anyway. So, a, a lease of of over three years is treated the same as if you purchased it. So it gets fully depreciated. You take the write off and things. If it's a three year lease or less, then you write off the payments. My, my thing is, look at the way you use your vehicle. If you buy your vehicle and you run it until the wheels fall off and maybe you have it for five or six years, I would say buy it because leases 
when you turn a lease in, if you've got, if your mileage is too high or if you've done certain things, a lot of times they'll penalize you for that. So really look at the lease terms and, and so forth. As far as whether I would use my cash or how I would, right now I would not use cash to buy a, a vehicle. I would be either, either purchasing it or using lease, either one, depending on my buying habits. But um, I would not use your, your cash to do it right now. Again, I'm, my, my recommendation right now is hold on to as much cash as you can. Um, and let's see where we are next year. Let's talk about it. We'll talk about it this time next year. And if, if we're still feeling like we've got a lot of cash sitting around, well, then maybe we can start paying off some debt comfortably. But right now, I would just keep it. All right. Um, another question. Did you say to not pay the highest interest rate that first? Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's really counterintuitive. But yes, that's what I said. So highest interest rate debt is not always the biggest cash um, it's not always the biggest usage of your cash. So again, getting back to that, that formula uh, for the cash flow index, looking at that is going to determine which one you should pay off first. Now, many times it might be the highest interest, but not always. So th that calculation just shows you how, where you're going to be able to spend money and get your debt paid down faster. So, you know, you pay it down faster, even if you're in a higher interest rate, it, the interest is going to drop really quickly if we can get rid of that debt fast. So I'm worrying, I'm wanting to get rid of that faster than worrying about getting rid of the higher interest rate first. All right. All right. It looks like we're out of questions. I um, so wanna thank everyone for attending today. Um, our recording will be available on demand on the FTD Mercury Network Florist YouTube channel. And for more education programming from FTD, visit ftdi.com to register for upcoming free webinars and design shows as well as viewing past education programs on demand. So thank you everyone, have a great day. Awesome guys, thank you.